my trachea. And there was a 70% chance that I would never speak. So yet here I am talking to you today. And obviously I had a lot to say because I haven't shut up since. And I've written, uh, going on eight books, I'm a speaker. Um, if you know me, I talk constantly. So your voice is very important. I mean, even though I was the oldest of eight children, nobody ever listened to me because <laughs> you're not my mom, you know, that kind of stuff. So I want to talk to you about your voice and what that means for your brand. So let's go here. Okay, so if you define marketing or branding or advertising, according to the Nelson Norman Group, your voice can have a huge impact on how much consumers trust and care about your brand. And I don't know if you've ever realized how many types of marketing there are out there. It's astonishing. Um, and so if you actually define marketing, it's activities that are undertaken by a company to promote the buying and selling of a product or service. Marketing includes advertising, selling, delivering products to consumers, and some marketing is done by affiliates on behalf of the company. Like I have an affiliate program for my publication so that people who love the publication, there's no, there's no selling involved. You just tell people about it. They use your link, you get paid. So it's kind of cool and it helps me in my business. So affiliate marketing is a great um, form of marketing. But there literally are, wait, there are dozens of types of marketing tactics and strategies and sources. And if you look in the chat um, under, it's called something, let me see, types of advertising, there's a Word document in there. And there's over 160 different types of advertising. Some of them are great. Some of them are just a load of hooey. But... Um, and you can just enter the term marketing in Google and you'll see all kinds of different strategies. So you want to find something that resonates with you. Because when it comes to marketing your business, you have so many options to choose from that sometimes it's overwhelming to know what to do, especially if you're an entrepreneur and you don't have a large team to call on. So that's kind of why I wanted to do this presentation because I know for me, I grew up in the advertising world. My mom's been in advertising since I was three years old. I would sit at her feet and watch her make, you know, these campaigns and stuff. And the industry has changed so much in the last 40 years, but I, I speak the language and yet it is still difficult for me in marketing my business. Um, so, we all want, obviously, to increase our visibility in our business and become more visible um, because that makes us more valuable. But to increase the visibility, you need to break expectations in, in a positive way. So I've made an extensive list, which is that list that I told you about, about the types of marketing techniques that you could try. And, you know, like I said, some of them are better than others. Some of them are, um, you know, just you don't even bother. Um, I personally um, tried email or um, postcard mailing marketing, and it did not work for me. I know some people it's very effective. So really do your research. But when you're when really something like that, it doesn't really tell a lot about your story. I'm talking more one on one, or in group settings. Um, I'm wearing my name tag. Your name tag is your story right there. You should wear your name tag. I know we're not going very many places right now, but I've actually been, worn my name tag. I was on my way to an ABWA meeting. I had on a black and white outfit and I was in Ross. I stopped by to get something and there was a lady in there. She also had on black and white. And I said, oh, I see you got the black and white memo. And she's like, oh yeah, huh? we didn't know each other. We just started talking and she saw my name tag. And we started talking and she's a hairstylist at JCPenney's. And so we made a connection just because I had a name tag. She had a name tag. We were wearing the same color. Your name tag is the beginning of your story and your connection right there. So what I'm really focusing on tonight is what is called native marketing or telling a story to promote your brand. Why? 
because native marketing is more effective than any of those 163 things that you're gonna see on that list. And I'll tell you why. Because neuroscience has proven that storytelling is an unbeatable way to capture someone's attention, embed information into their minds, and create a bond with your audience. I mean, think about it. Think about um, Jesus told stories, and we remember the stories more than we remember the scriptures, at least I do anyway, um, because of what they have to say, the meanings that are involved in them. If you run into somebody and you, um, and, and Trina Johnson, we had mentioned this in one of the masterminds one time about how you're introducing yourself. If you're going for a job interview or, um, and your potential boss says, how are you doing today? Tell me something about yourself. And you say, oh, I've got 20 years in, you know, graphic design and I'm a this and a that. And then, okay, that's great. That's your resume spewed out. And that's important, but he's got that right in front of them. But if you say, well, I just moved to town. I sold everything I had. I needed a change. I, you know, been just lost 45 pounds because I want to run this marathon. You know, you're just carrying on a conversation. He's going to see that you have drive, you have vision, you have determination, you're tenacious. And so those are all things that already talk about your character just by telling a story without having to say, well, I'm strong-willed and I'm dependent and I'm tenacious. And, you know, it's, it's more in what you're saying. So... People crave stories, and that's never going to change. I mean, my gosh, look at Facebook. Look at any social media. Um, if there's a story out there, good or bad, most of the time people are drawn to it. And as long as there have been humans, there have been stories, because stories are how we connect the world. And it's also how we connect to our customers, because they are living a story themselves. But it is likely that we'll ever put ourselves in their shoes or know what drives them if we don't truly understand the stories that they are living and what keeps them up at night. Like, I don't know if you've noticed lately, but there sure is a lot of commercials about killing germs and dust mites and hand sanitizing and being clean. Why? Because the market, the branding people know that people are concerned about this right now. They're concerned about health and hygiene and cleanliness and blah, 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 blah. And so that's what keeps them up at night. That's what's their pain. That's what drives them. And so what is the better future that they want is what we and our branding need to find out, how we can help that pain. Our job is to get them there by creating a story that allows us to change their lives to create that connection. And stories that are told orally are one of the first forms of communication. Um, I heard a story today, it was a pastor talking about the storm that the world is going through and how everybody is in such fear right now. But think about the storm when Jesus was in the boat with his disciples and they're all scared and they're all freaked out and he's asleep because he wasn't afraid. He knew it was coming and his faith outweighed his fear. And I'm just assuming that everybody here is a believer, but whether you are or not, it's just your story and how it's portrayed and how others, it's, it's finding that connection. And stories are a huge human, I mean, think about, the stories your dad used to tell about going fishing with your grandpa and the fish was this big when really it was this big, you know, I mean, legends, campfire stories. I mean, stories have been around forever and we remember them. So if we surround ourselves by stories, then those are things that are going to set us apart and are going to make us remembered. Um, in fact, over half of human conversation comes in the form of a story because we're more receptive to stories than we are to data and facts. I don't care how much of a geek you are, you like statistics and graphs and bars and all of that. If I tell you a story, you're probably going to remember it more than the statistics. So um, that's because stories help us relate. They allow us to empathize. And they allow <laughs> our brains to process information in a form that's more digestible and memorable. Because truthfully, the bottom line is people want information. They have a problem, they have a pain, they have a need, 
and they need information or they want information that's going to solve that. And so if you can, you can say, I have this product that's going to solve your problem, but if I relate to you and you say, my kid has dyslexia, I have a tutor, well, heck yeah, I want to talk to your, your person because you can empathize with what I'm feeling. So that's why that connection is so huge and so important. And when you go online and you post even about your favorite event or a situation, you're telling a story without even realizing it. You are putting your character and your story out there. I had somebody tell me the other day, because I've been posting just memes about all kinds of crazy stuff that's going on. And I had somebody tell me, and I kind of took this as a compliment. She says, you post some funny stuff on Facebook. And I said, well, I just believe in being positive, focusing on, you know, the good. She goes, but I never know where you stand because some of it's this way, some of it's this way. So I said, that's because, you know, I'm not going to get into this big old debate, you know, wear a mask, don't wear a mask, vote for Trump, don't vote for, I'm not going there. I'm just going to say, oh, this is kind of silly. Somebody might like it and put it out there. So that's why telling a good story is one of the most powerful skills you can have. And like I said, I have stories that go back to when I was four years old, like the one that I told you about my, my cyst. Um, I have dozens of stories. I've written eight books and there are still stories that aren't even in some of those books. Um, mm. But <clears throat> many of you know how my company got started. Um, for those of you don't, who don't, um, through my divorce, I was feeling, you know, I was pushing 50. Um, boy, that was a long time ago now, since now I'm pushing 60. Um, and I just was feeling broken, unwanted, invisible, unworthy, who would want these damaged goods. And I turned around and I just had a friend tell me, you know, you're beautiful, you're talented, you're smart. And so I just was like, you know what? I am. And so I took some pictures and um, I posted them on Facebook. I told my story in an image and I thought, well, gosh, if I can do this for me, I can do it for anybody. And ultimately, that's how, um, you know, I started hearing the stories of these other women. And not just, you know, invisible, battered, pitiful, sad, depressed women, but confident, empowered, strong, you know, beautiful, wonderful women who they felt good about themselves and they wanted the world to know it. Because storytelling is so powerful because it triggers a biological response. It grabs our attention and it provokes emotion and it engages people automatically. Um, a good story trigger is um, when, you, when you hear a story, it releases cortisol, which is the stress chemical or, okay, so it'll either make you feel yucky or it'll make you feel good and release oxytocin, which is the feel good chemical which explains why you feel anxious when you're watching a scary movie or happy when you're watching a romantic comedy. It triggers some kind of neurocoupling in your brain and an experience where the brain activity imitates what the story is that you're, you're hearing, what's resonated. So it's not about seeing images or hearing a voice, it's about the core of the story that resonates with you, the moral of the story. And we've been hearing you know, we've been hearing a lot of ugly stories, a lot of things that have been going on. And every once in a while, somebody will throw something good out there that's happening in the midst of it. And they're few and far between that's posted, but they are out there. And so if you go to the next slide, um, <clears throat> those who tell stories rule the world. That is a Native American proverb. And I really, thoroughly believe this because like we've been talking about stories humanize a brand with the rise of social media consumers have gotten used to directly engaging with their brands they ask questions they troubleshoot they share their feelings you know everything's in real time right now so it's it's humanized i can talk to i can talk to janice even if I didn't know her personally, if I lived in North Carolina and I bought something and I'm like, oh, I feel this way about this. Is this normal? She'll reach right out to me, you know, because there's that human connection. Um, stories make things stick. If you're faced with two options, like we talked about, you know, the charts and graphs, the data sheets, or, um, you know, 
the that kind of stuff that shows the benefits of exercise or you go to Alex's um, salad in a jar thing you're going to remember her stories and her visuals because it's for one it's really awesome and she's very knowledgeable about what she does but that's what you're going to remember rather than something like that also stories contextual contextualize problems like we talked about products and services are all designed to solve some sort of problem that's out there that the world is facing so if you present your brand without explaining the problem you can say oh i have this beautiful you know be you know jelly cosmetic who cares what's it going to do for me what's the benefit of bee jelly um so you know, if you've got like, my daughter has severe eczema. As soon as Janice found out, first thing she did was send her. She didn't give it to me to send her. She sent her a sample herself. Let her try this because she's a nurse. She washes her hands all the time. This, she needs something like this, to, you know, because she connected with me that there was a problem that needed fixed. And all it was, was we weren't even talking about Jaffra. We were just talking about life. You know, your daughter, she's a nurse. How's she doing? This whole COVID thing, you know, just, and then that can, so boom, you know, a possible sale made. And that's what I'm talking about. If you find that there's a problem that you can fix in a relatable way, that is an opportunity. But so, like it or not, we are all emotional beings and our brains are programmed to remember things that tap our emotions more than facts and data. <clears throat> so why stories for business well because stories heal they bring people together when you use storytelling in your business you immediately start to build an authentic meaningful relationship with your audience stories display vulnerability and offer trust your heart your stories are at the heart of your message and you can't live your message without them I mean you can't you are your brand and your heart is going to come through in your conversations if you're strictly if janice was just out there just to and i keep using janice because she's sitting right here i'm picking on you but if she just went around and went buy my stuff buy my stuff buy my stuff and i know people that that's all they do is they just shove it shove it shove it and they're not janice gives away more stuff and donates so much stuff and spends so much of her time educating and teaching and building relationships that that's why she has clients that she's had for close to 40 years because of the stories and the connections and the problems that she solved so stories obviously make us relatable and build relationships they create that what you too effect it's like ah oh, i had no idea like the whole dyslexia thing, like the, the nurse. Oh, I've got the perfect thing. They make you relatable. And business storytelling helps your audience get to know the real you. To know that it's not just about the sale. It's not just about the money for you. And I mean, of course, we all need the money. That's how we pay our bills. But, you know, I, I've heard a term called um, touch choreography. And it takes, you know, ever how many times to touch something or communicate with somebody to actually make that sale. And if you don't put in the work, then, you know, it's probably not going to happen for a long, long time. So when you're sharing your experiences and you're building an experience for those who hear your stories, this creates an emotional, extraordinary emotional connection. So if you have a relationship with somebody that you can make a difference in their lives, but just because you're creating content doesn't mean that you're effectively telling a story. People put stuff out there just, oh, I just got to keep stuff. I just got to put it out there, put it out there, put it out there, put it out there. But what is the message? Is it all consistent? Is it all relatable to your brand? I got this cute cup for my birthday and it says, not a day over fabulous because my birthday is Saturday. And because I'm focused on fabulous, my friends my clients my colleagues people who know me they find if they see something that has the word fabulous on it they buy it for me <laughs> i mean it's like i saw this and i thought of you and it's because that is my brand and plus i'm fabulous but it's just very very awesome that that is it resonates within me out into my audience through my stories and through the connections that i've made with people so just because you're putting content out there doesn't mean you're telling your story effectively. 
I put positive, encouraging. Yeah, I have bad days. I have crappy days. I have days that we were just talking like for April, I had day pajamas and night pajamas. I didn't wear a bra for two months. Finally, I was like, I need to get up, get motivated and get off my pity party. And, but I didn't post it. I didn't, and that doesn't mean you shouldn't, but when you surround yourself with your tribe, you have people to help build you up. And just make sure that what you're putting out there, that your brand and your story is consistent with your, that your personality and what you're putting out there are the same. Okay. Um, because so many people get caught up in quantity over quality mindset and they forget about the effective storytelling of their product centered content. And it doesn't really make a connection with their audience. So this, for all you graph and, and statistics people, this is for you. So as you can see, and this was the earliest one I could find, went to 2015, but when you use storytelling for your business, you immediately start to build an authentic, meaningful relationship with your audience. So as you can see, 83% of people buy from recommendations from people they know. That's a lot of percentage. Consumer opinion, 66. Editorial content, hello. <clears throat> like Focus on Fabulous magazines, such as native advertising, storytelling in newspapers and magazines. And I've been doing that since day one with my publication. I'm glad that you are a realtor and that you can sell my home in 10 days, but so does 10,000 other people in Charleston area. What makes you special? So you have an architect degree, or you're going to tell me how to stage my home like Raina and get it ready to sell. These are unique qualities that are your specific brand. That those stories need to be told, and that's what separates you and your brand. And then if you look over here, I don't know if you can see my finger on here or not, but if you look over here, the top three most trusted ad formats, 83% people I know, websites, 70%, and consumer opinions. So referrals are huge, huge, 66% of people will, and why? Because they tried something and they heard a story from somebody else about a product or service. So, and then the websites, obviously, I mean, how many times do you just stumble on a website? You go to a website because somebody told you to check this out, check out this brand, check out this website. And then obviously recommendations. Again, somebody told you a story, to check out this product or service. That's my daughter. I thought I had muted it. Sorry. Um, you need me to text her. No. Um, but I do need to mute it. I'm so sorry. I really thought I had already done that. Um, I went back in time for a second there, Michelle. What? With your ring. With your ringtone. I went back in time there. I oh, know, right? Queen, right? Well, that's Dancing Queen. That's my daughter's <laughs> ringtone. But yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so we're just about wrapping it up here. I got another couple of slides. So actually, I wanted to really explain to you that 82% of consumers buy brands they feel emotionally connected to. I know I've bought stuff just because it's my friend. You know, I just want to help them start their business or grow their business or whatever. And we have an emotional connection. But that being said, when customers and clients are emotionally invested in a product or service, their brand loyalty is limited, limitless. Stories create that powerful emotional investment. And I can tell you, in this latest magazine, I did a photo shoot with Janice and six ladies that she has been providing Jaffer with. Some of them up to 50 years, I think. Some of them 10 years, some of them 50 years. All different ages, races, sizes, everything. All different times, but each one of them had a story. They had an emotional invested part of that product and their brand loyalty, they've been using it since day one because of their brand loyalty. Part of it is because Janice takes the time to sit, listen to them, tells her story, how she can relate. And so that brand loyalty is humongous. So um, when, like I mentioned before, 85 to 90% of users 
agreed that native marketing offers something that no other platform really does. Valuable content to the audience. It can be used to promote content, like we were talking about with staging or, you know, it, like I've um, featured a, a lady who owns a massage, um, a massage salon. And I never knew, I mean, I just thought, oh, massages feel good. You should get one once in a while. There's actually health benefits to getting a massage. It's like taking vitamin C. I mean, you need one. I'm telling you ladies, you need one at least once a quarter. And there are huge, huge health benefits to a massage. And by getting that information, it promoted her business, gave me good information that I didn't even really know I needed. It can also build audiences because now I've got this information. I'm telling everybody, did you know that massages are actually really healthy for you? They pull all those toxins and impurities out of your body. They release stress. They lower your heart rate. They, I mean, all these wonderful things. And native marketing also can be used to drive action. For example, I was just telling Janice when I first moved here, I was um, at a the local restaurant many of you are familiar with here, Amici's Italian Bistro. Uh, it's a small business woman. She opened the week after I started my publication. And I was there taking a cooking class that she was offering. It was 20 bucks, make the manicotti, get a free glass of wine, learn how to make it. So I went and she was telling the story as we were making this stuff about her Italian family and her grandmother and how she made her sauce and how the smell would fill the kitchen and just all these wonderful. And I, I became so like this little kid, I could almost smell the sauce cooking in her stories. And by the time the class was over, I went up to her and I said, I want to tell your story. And since then I have held numerous benefits and events at her place. I have referred dozens of customers to her. Um, and it has been a great, great collaboration, but it all started with a story. So moreover, 76% of native users and 73% of non-users agree that native marketing is more effective, like I said, than traditional banner advertising. So is this, yeah, so and um, even Forbes magazine says that writing articles that demonstrate your passion and expertise helps build confidence in your company and can be a valuable way to promote your business and products. When customers recognize the company as an authority, that company becomes the go-to organization for the area of expertise. Like I was talking about the massage lady or even, even Priscilla with her travel, that woman knows her stuff. And if I, in fact, I have messaged her and said, hey, I want to go here. What's going on? How do I need to find this out? And I know that she is an expert in her field and what she does. And rather than say, oh, let me book you on a cruise, she's always putting content out there, putting information, what state's requirements. She, she sent me all this information on what you have to do to travel to here or there or wherever. She's very, very knowledgeable. And so I automatically, when I need something for travel, my girl, because I know she is the, she is my go-to person in that area. So why do 70% of users would rather learn about products through content than regular advertisement? And so why is that? Because Fueled by social networks and, mo and mobile commuting, consumers have rapidly developed this insatiable appetite for information. We want to know what we want to know. We want a problem solved right now, period, end of discussion. We want insight rather than product pitches. We, we trust friends and colleagues more than salespeople. We want to navigate our own way to purchase and make that decision rather than get squeezed through a sales funnel or or feel like we're being blindsided or bait and switched and the financial times even noted that it's about creating quality experiences that people want to spend time with in fact traditional publishers like the wall the wall street journal and the new york times have embraced native advertising as a huge effective form of advertising so now for the excuses. Where do you begin? Well, first of all, 
there's a lot of missed opportunities out there. For example, talks, events, and classes. Okay, I went to that class, I paid $20 for this cooking class, got a free glass of wine and lunch, basically. But I got to talk about my magazine. I got a client. I've gotten, you know, extra benefits just by knowing Jennifer. Um, I do, you know, I did ABWA day and, and I mean, I'm always doing vending events and things and just making those connections. In fact, at ABWA day, another vendor came up to me and she said, I want to tell my story in your magazine. Never met this woman before. And she told her story and she is just posting like crazy on Facebook. She has done so much wonderful stuff and it, it may not have really helped her business sales, but it boosted her confidence in such a way that she is just on fire with her product. She's excited. She's enthused. She's engaged all because she broke out of a domestic relationship and started doing this thing and wanted to tell the world that if I can do it, you can do it. So there's all different kinds of, you know, so if you're at a vending event or something, don't just stand there and wait for the world to come to you. Reach out and talk to people, find out who they are. Um, I met a lady one time and I said, so what do you do? And she says, I sell legal shield. And I was, I thought, and I'll admit, Oh my gosh, you and 5,000 other people in Charleston. And actually, one of the big, big wigs of Legal Shield is my ex uncle. But um, I was like, oh, so you know so and so. And she's like, yeah, I know him. And I said, wow. And she goes, yeah, I spent 35 years in the medical field. And at 52 years old, I just decided to make a career change. I gave up my pension and everything and started my own business with Legal Shield. And I was like, now that's a story to give up your pension at 50 something and start a whole new career, you know, but that was an opportunity that I would have missed if I'd have gone, oh, legal shield, never mind, been there, done that. So don't take those missed opportunities for granted. Business cards are a huge way to make connections, talk to people, even if it's not somebody that you think is in your industry or that you'd be, you may know somebody you know, I mean, you may know, and you may not know them right now, you know, 10 years down the line. I met somebody from Jacksonville who I was like, she needed something. And I have family in Jacksonville. And I'm like, I know somebody you should talk to. <laughs> who would have known? Swag bags are a really inexpensive way to get your brand out there. And don't just put, you know, just a business card. Make it something. I buy these like little these are at the Dollar Tree, and they're three little hand sanitizers, and I put business cards in them. Every time I go to the dollar store, I grab 10 or 12 of them, and then I just keep them till I have like 100. And, you know, I mean, there's so many different ways to get your, your voice out there. Um, and then, of course, Focus on Fabulous Magazine and Podcast is a great value beyond traditional, beyond traditional advertising. So getting the word out and telling your story is very simple. 52% um, of marketers use storytelling in their marketing. Only 52%. That is a lot of missed opportunities. So what, what story are you telling? Do you want the same story all the time? Should you change your stories up? Well, where do you start? I mean, it's, it just seems so overwhelming. So here are some examples of some business stories. And if you look on the um, chat, there's seven brand story um, things. And there's different, there's seven little tips um, to um, help you as you're starting to create your brand story. But you can start with your origin. Like I told you, my origin being, you know, unwanted, damaged, fat, ugly, whatever, pitiful, starting my business. Then there's success stories. Like the girl I told you from the ABWA who got so motivated and so excited about her, her article that she has just been on fire and she's, do, and it's not bragging or boasting to be success. These reiterate your credibility. Referrals, testimonies, reviews. You saw that slide earlier. It's like 60 some percent of people buy from referrals and reviews. So get those, ask for them. You need them, you deserve them, and they help tell your story. I've told probably 10 stories here tonight, just of different people. Tell people what you're doing. If you're doing something new or different or exciting, let people know about it. Um, whenever I have somebody on my cover, 
or we featured a story, I'm always doing a video. Hey, she's on my cover. How's it feel? What's going on? You know, and just let people know that you're excited about what you do, because if you're excited, they're going to get excited. Also, future stories. That's different than your mission statement, because it paints a picture to the world of a better world. So, and I've got this Betsy Johnson in here. Betsy Johnson, if you're familiar with her, she makes this really funky, neat jewelry and accessories. And I saw a documentary on powerful women or empowered women or something. And, and she's a really neat, funky lady. And I really liked her interview. And she says, you know, she goes, I just don't like things that are ordinary. I just decided I was going to make some stuff and put it out there and see if anybody else liked it. Well, now she's a gazillionaire, you know, I mean, she just, what the heck, I'm going to throw it out there and see, you know, so think about, you know, dream big. And this brings powerful layers of dimension to your business. And also you attract kindred spirits that pulls them into, they want to help you. They want to be a part of what you're doing. They're passionate about what you believe. So when you're writing your story, you could say, oh, but I'm not a writer. What story should I tell? Make sure that it's meaningful. Make sure that it's personal. Make sure that it's emotional because you, wanna, you want to have that connection. Make sure it's simple. I mean, me, I could, as you know, talk for hours, but if you keep it short and sweet, it's going to be remembered more. So keep it simple. Keep it authentic. Don't do the, the fish was this big when he was only this big. Keep it authentic. Be real. People prefer real. I can truly tell you, I've posted some pretty, look at this, you know, whatever, I'm whatever. And I get more comments and more people relate to me when I'm authentic than when, you know, it's like, oh, look at this, whatever. So be, be your true you because people want authentic. And so in your packet that you're going to get, there is a brainstorming um, thing and it'll have some different ideas and it'll have a couple of little worksheets to help you. Um, and so to get started, I want you to just, just do a brain dump, just talk on paper. Okay. But first drop the ego. Now, like I said, there's a difference between bragging and, you know, being, I used to tell my son, there's and being confident. So you can be a success and be happy and be proud. I mean, I have everything I know, everything I've done, I've taught myself. I have 12 college credits. So I basically have a high school education and everything I've learned, I've learned on my own. And that to me, that speaks a lot about what I know because I'm just tenacious enough to figure it out. So just be confident and I know my stuff because you are going to be portrayed to the world as an expert in that industry. And if you're like, well, I don't know, maybe like, then who's going to take you seriously? So be confident, but drop the ego. So be relatable. Make sure that you can, you're knowing your audience and what's keeping them up at night and what their pain is or what they're, what they want that you can fix and approach that with clear focus and compassion. Be engaging. Be a page stopper. That's one thing I said about my magazine from the beginning. When you pick up a magazine, it's page after page after page after page of ads. And my page, my magazine, every page has a title that makes you go, hmm, what's that about? So your business, your industry should be, you should be a page stopper. You should be of all the realtors, of all the travel agents, of all the cosmetic medic people you're the one that people are crossing the street and they go whoo what was that you know <laughs> they stop to check out what you're doing because you're you're a page stopper and set a clear outcome let your audience know what's in it for them and i'm really bad about this trina helps me with this a lot because i'll write something up and and i'm so busy trying to say what i'm an expert at that it becomes all about me and she's like nope take the me out what's 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 in it for them so you always want to remember, you can say how good you are at what you do, but remember what's in it for them. So you need this, I can do this because blah, 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 blah. So try my story helps others blank. 
and start collecting stories because you don't want one one simple story so that you know everybody's heard it a thousand times because you'll have different stories for different products different services different customers different you know demographics so as a business owner you need to have a repertoire of stories in your toolbox stories about who you are as a person or a leader um, what you stand for, what your values are, stories that bring your vision to life, that illuminate your purpose, let people know why you do what you do, develop stories that teach something. Um, Priscilla has been doing that a lot with her videos, teaching us all kinds of really cool stuff. Janice and I were talking about her, you know, teaching some stories on, you know, just how to do cat eyes and, you know, just crazy stuff. So have an encouraging, uplifting message or more important, solve a problem. So don't be afraid. Your strength and your story are greater than your fears. So remember those five adjectives that you started with? Have they changed now that you've heard me? Imagine your dream spokesperson. If you could just set this little robot to say, my business is blah, 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 and just toot your horn and say who you are and what you do and what would they say? And then ask yourself, who is the perfect face of your brand and why? So I would even suggest create a mood board if you're, if you're struggling. And that's different than a vision board because if you're having trouble describing yourself, Sometimes it helps to see yourself. So you can compile images of the person that you want to be, not your visual identity, but your unique personality. You know, I'm quirky, I'm fun, I'm, you know, artistic, I'm colorful, different things that reflect your personality. And if you're really struggling, you can ask others, describe me in one word and kind of see, ooh, that's what people think about me, or oh, really, wow, you know, I'm, I'm resonating this. And so that's kind of helpful too, because um, it, it, you could ask yourself, is that how I want my brand to be portrayed? So, let me see, ask who you want to be your customers, and who your, would your ideal customer turn to you for help? And what traits would make them choose you over somebody else? Why would somebody want information from you as opposed to somebody else? That doesn't mean you have to go, oh, well, they're doing da 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 You know, they've got their own unique skill sets and tools. And remember, remember, remember that everybody is not your customer. You don't have to please everybody. That took me a long time to realize that. Um, so you have your own unique clientele, and that's who you need to focus on. So one more thing that I want to tell you is we do have several different, different branding offers to assist you. Um, we've got the, you know, different packages. We do a lot of stuff with authors. We do, you know, we've got the podcast. If you get this packet and you're just like, oh my gosh, I'm so overwhelmed, call me. I'll be happy to kind of go over things with you. Um, I do actually have a business brain tour, um, brainstorming special, um, 30 minutes for um, $99 for ABWA members. I'll do it for 75. So um, if you're, you know, you just want to brainstorm where you're going next in your business. You know, you want to get your stories going and find your ideal client. Um, and whether you want to be a subscriber and just subscribe to the magazine for $40 a year or partner with us and get a whole bunch of, you know, just the whole enchilada, we can do that for you too. Um, just remember that finding a brand story is one of the most effective ways to entice, engage, and encourage people to build a relationship with your brand exclusively for you. And we are can help you do that through the magazine, through our blog, through website links, podcast interviews, brainstorming sessions, whatever. Um, business storytelling, like I've been saying over and over and over, is about building relationships and they don't start overnight. You don't walk into a room and suddenly we're BFFs. It's happened sometimes. I mean, I met somebody who's like, oh my God, are we related? Because we're just, we just click. But your relationships are based on shared goals, values, dreams, desires, and mutual understanding and trust. Um, that sharing of personal stories and details about your expertise and what you do in your business, that your audience instantly gets who you are and what you stand for. 
and how you want to contribute that to the world and make their world better. So that's pretty much all I had. Um, do we have time for some questions? Did I go really long? <laughs> We've got time. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? Let me unsquare my screen. Okay. Okay. That's it. Done. It wasn't long. That was actually good because I was thinking because I don't know, it just came into my mind a couple weeks ago about telling stories, you know, and it sort of came out as I pivoted once I got clarity on what my niche was going to be. So um, as I started talking about Africa travel, then I started getting excited about it because of the spin or the perspective that I'm coming from as being an African American and not knowing anything about Africa at all and always wondering, asking questions from the time you were a child and wanting to go there and sort of discovering things about the people that you came from, but it, we've been here for like 400 years, right? So there's like really no tie. And when we meet people who come here, it's just so different. The culture is so different. It's like, there's like, um, you know, it's like a, it's a disconnect and they don't understand why we are the way we are. And then we don't understand why they are the way they are. Cause it's just one thing that's really cool about going to other countries or even other venturing outside of our own comfort zone is learning the, the compassion and the respect for the other and I was a preacher's kid and part of our catechism we had to go to a Greek Orthodox church and they did the incense and they you know and the first thing that our pastor told us is first snicker first laugh I mean we were middle schoolers you know so he gave us the warning but it was about they're doing, they do this, this is their culture, this is the way they do it, but he wanted us to learn about all these different denominations so that we could understand that it's not just about me and my views and what I think and what I believe, and there's a whole world out there, and like, that's exactly what you're saying about yeah. going to Africa and experiencing yeah. that in, in a whole different light and being able to come back and share that wisdom and knowledge. Sort of. The stories are powerful. Sort of, because I grew up in New York, so I'm used to being around people from other cultures. So I grew up with everybody, you know? So mm -hmm. when I moved down here, it's different. But I'm used to being around people from everywhere, mm -hmm. you know? So that wasn't, it wasn't strange to me. It's not strange to me to be around people from different cultures. It's not knowing about African culture and we're African and we know nothing about it. So right. it's a different thing for African Americans wanting to go to Africa versus people in general who want to go for vacation because they want to go on safari or they want to experience the touristy stuff. So for me, I, I, what started was I did my DNA. When I did my DNA, can you hear me? And when I did my DNA, I went through 23andMe and I like 23andMe because it has like a map and, and it shows all of the, the percentages of the regions and they're all, you know, estimated because, you know, those people don't live in the same regions they were now, but the bloodlines are there. Right, right. And then they have the history. And then I actually found a relative of mine in Nigeria. So we share an ancestor and, um, and she's like in Port Harcourt, like Nigeria. And I've met people from Nigeria, and every time I would meet people from Africa, and I got to know them better. And the, I didn't just do this to people I didn't know. I would always ask them, who do I look like? And they would be like, what do you mean? I'm like, who do I look like? You're a I'm asking, who do I look like? Because I want to know what people group am I from. And I would always look for myself in their faces, you know? And then one preacher told me, you look like you come from the uh, Port Harcourt area in Nigeria. And I was like, really? And then I went and did my DNA, and guess what? I met a relative, and she lived in Port Harcourt in um, Nigeria. So 
that's the story. That's part of my story, but you know, yeah, that, that's awesome. It's exciting. And then there's a lot of people who probably, who probably feel the same way and they want to know, they want to go back, you know, they want to, um, learn, you know, because we don't learn that kind of stuff. Definitely. Yeah. So that's the story that's in the realm. That's the, that's the niche that I'm, um, focusing on right now. Yeah, definitely. That's very cool. Get back to hey, Michelle, when, um, I understand there's a package that you're going to try and get to us. Yes, ma'am. Is that including this presentation? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, well, I mean, it's a, it's a folder and it has a whole bunch of pages and stuff in it. So okay. I can, I had mentioned earlier at the beginning, I can mail it. If you're going to see somebody, um, she she if you want to see Janice, she can bring it to you. I can leave yeah. it on my door. Give mine, Give mine to Janice. Get it. That would be great. Give mine to Janice. Okay. Thank you. And it was a great, great uh, presentation. And it was a lot of incredible information shared. So thank you so much. It was a lot to kind of cut down. I, yeah, you know, it was good. No, you uh, weren't over. That's it wasn't why I made like, the packet so that you can actually take some time to delve in and brainstorm and you know, kind of work on it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you did a good job, uh, Michelle. I took Priscilla, away. Do you live in North Charleston? No, ma'am. No, she lives in Somerville. Okay. I know where she lives. Why did I even ask that? Yeah. <laughs> hi, Michelle. It's Alexandria. I just wanted to say thank hi. you. Um, hi. I just want to say thank you for the presentation. And um, it's certainly a lot for me to digest as I'm coming into this new realm of uh, potentially being a, a business owner, but I appreciate, I just want to say, I appreciate um, it giving me a starting point because I haven't uh, really thought about where I want to go, but I think if I have an appreciation for my own personal story, that will help shape maybe the direction that I go to and help me kind of define um, a purpose that I want to fulfill in, in whatever business that I, I pursue. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. get the pack Michelle Michelle I think she froze you hear Michelle Alexandria could you could you hear me yeah I heard you oh hi I, th I think maybe she froze. She did. Oh, she froze. oh, there we go. But yeah, yeah, I appreciate Michelle's be authentic, be confident, but drop the ego. That was a very good phrase. And be a page stopper. Are we still here? Is everybody yeah, here? Yeah, I'm here. It's yeah, not, I can hear you. coming in and out, that's all. Yeah. All righty. There you go. Michelle. Sorry, ladies. We, well, we, okay. we got knocked off. So um, I was asking Alexandria how she wanted to get her packet. Does she live in this area? Oh, thank I, you, didn't, in North I North. didn't realize you were talking to me. <laughs> oh, you talking you're to Alexandria me? as well. Yeah, sorry. Oh, okay. I rarely yeah. meet another oh, Alexandria. Oh, sorry. This is great. <laughs> Oh, wait, wait, wait. You're yeah. Alex. You're Alex. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm Alex. Oh, okay. Like, hey, okay. Yes, I can get, um, uh, I live in North Charleston, so I guess I can connect. Um, so do I. You're in okay, North Charleston. Okay, I'll give yours to Janice and she'll connect with you then. Is that okay? Okay, great. That's fine. Because she That's lives fine. in North Charleston also. She's okay, so wonderful. Great. All right. Wonderful. Yeah, do you want to drop mine oh, off you. too? Since you're going to be dropping Alexandria's off, because I think we're not too far Dr. from another. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We should make you some stickies so that you know who. Yeah. You need a secretary. You do. You need a secretary. She needs a secretary. secretary. <laughs> okay. Or can you so, email yeah, it? There's a way you can post it on our community connections yeah. and our Jessamine Oh, no, you're there. So, um, if you want to put it on okay, the so my community catch, 
Yeah. Raina, how are you going to get your packet, bud? Um, would you be able to mail it to me? Or you can um, email it like um, Sonia was saying. Maybe can can it be emailed? I think she's back oh. again. <laughs> she goes. Michelle, can I just put it in the mail to you? Sure, that'll be great. I can um, pop I your probably... pop your address in the chat, and I'll mail it to okay. you. I to tell Perfect. everyone that my post is my phone number. If they'll contact me, anyone in North Charleston, I'll um, work on a delivery. Okay. Um, Janice posted her phone number in the chat. Anybody in North Charleston who wants it, text her and she'll get it. Um, Donna, you're in Georgia. I can mail yours as well if you'd like, since I'm going to mail Raina's. No, Donna's in, drop it in the... Donna's in Florida. And okay. Okay. Well, I'll mail those then. Okay. So I'll put my email, uh, my address okay. in the chat then. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Raina. Okay. One, one, four, two. Holding. In. Okay. Trina, well, thank you all so much. I appreciate all the. Thank you for all the something. information, Michelle. Everything was great. I loved everything you had you. to say. All the tips, uh, believe me, we're going to put some into practice. <laughs> Thank you. Were you able to get the two sheets that were in the um, chat, the two documents, no. the list of all the marketing? And I can stick them back in there um, for people who didn't get them. And then the the seven little tips um i can email those out michelle it's just it those to me right yeah yeah I need. okay so. ask dorothea if she could text me her address i will um i will i'll do it you gonna get dorothea hers janice Okay, so there's those two for for you. Those those were just going to be actual handouts that were sitting on your um, thing, but the others are all stapled and you know all that. So it's kind of a little Dorothea packet. Wants me to do, I'll do her so it's really that one. Okay, but we'll make sure that you have everybody. All right, Pauline Avenue. Okay, um, James Island. No, Charleston. Dorothy is wanting hers mailed, but I can drop it off. I go that way. Okay. All right. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. We appreciate you. Thank you. Janice. Yes, ma'am. Do you want to do our presentation? I can't. You're muted. There you go. I know. I'm on. I'm unmuted. I'm muted. So Michelle can be talking. So now I had to tell, take. Do you want to do your presentation now? Oh, you're, you're frozen. I think I can. Janice. <laughs> <laughs> the internet keeps going in and out. I don't know what's going on in the past few days. Yeah. So, hey, Janice, you're muted. Okay, so. And frozen. Carter is going to help me tonight. <laughs> huh? Something to you. Um, it's on half of our chat. So, Trina Carter, take it away. Oh, um, you want me to take it away? Um, Alrighty, everyone. We've got a little surprise for somebody tonight. Um, Jan, where Janice go? She's still there. I'm right here. Oh, you know what? I had my, I unmuted myself and I had my volume. I unmuted myself and I had my volume. <laughs> okay. We've got a little surprise for somebody tonight. We, um, and actually what was funny is 
Michelle had asked if we could we not celebrate tonight. So we were like, yeah, we can celebrate. And um, <laughs> and we're going to celebrate our woman of the year tonight. And um, and we are going to make that presentation tonight. And um, the person that is the woman of the year is an awesome individual. Um, she is very giving, very kind, very, um, she promotes people like no, no other. She, um, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how I can say this and not so she won't know who she is, but, um, Michelle Bryant Griffin is the 2019-2020 Woman of the Year for ABWA Jessamine Chapter. Wait a minute, I was muted. Oh my gosh, really? That's why you came? <laughs> <laughs> wow. And that's why I got a guest tonight. Oh, <laughs> Early birthday and congratulations. You are 13. Wow. You are always promoting our ABW. Congratulations. So for her, I had to sit here with the president. Wow. Oh, Michelle. And you didn't know we were celebrating you tonight. Oh, that's so funny. So, being we do. Happy birthday. Yeah, and it's your birthday. The birthday present. That was just a decoy. Because I wanted her to think it was a birthday present. <laughs> Yeah, wow. so, you, so we do get to celebrate and congratulate. Thank you. Oh my gosh. You are our woman of the year. Wow. I, I yeah, see when don't I, ask for a speech. I have I have nothing to say. <laughs> we got you. That's all I got. For the first time in my life I had a loss for words. Yeah. Wow. That's why I've been well we truly saying, appreciate you. Oh, hey, you don't know what I'm fixing to do. My gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Wow. That's yeah. For all that you do. I mean, you did two articles on ABWA this year in your magazine, in a supporterly magazine. You went to, um, you went and you represented ABWA. When we did had the Dream Girls Conference, you're, you always step in, you always step up. You always are our hostess and signing our individuals in when we, came, when we came to the meetings, when we were live. You're just an all around good woman and we do truly appreciate you. And do not cry. Too late. We love you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and you were our speaker tonight. <laughs> Can you imagine knowing what I know when I'm sitting on this? No, how did you do that with a straight face? I will never trust this woman again. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, it worked oh. out because when Janice volunteered, oh, I was just like, oh, this works out really well. <laughs> She'll be right saying. there, and you can, she can Everybody give it to you. Feels the same way. It was unanimous in voting for you. Really? Yay. So no right. speech. Hang on, hang on one second. Hang on one second. No. <laughs> hey, Bailey. Yeah. Bailey, What'd she do? <laughs> I was gonna bring my husband in, but I don't know where he is. 
Well, I was going to share it with my husband, but I don't know where he is. Oh, we want you got all night to share it with. Look. He's the A B B A U A woman of the year. She's the woman of the year. That was for protege. This is woman of the year. Awesome. <laughs> wow, there's a male. Yeah, I know, because she's on my. No. Yeah, he's in his pajama pants, so he's not getting in the video. Oh. Unless you ladies have dollar bills or something, and then we can make arrangements. But well, hey, we almost <laughs> had you, lunch Ray tonight. <laughs> I'm burning up. Wow, I'm so I can't believe it. I just am speechless. Uh -huh. well, we're anyway, thank you. Oh. Oh, my gosh, you're, you're, we you're love you, Michelle. Turn mine off again. Oh, and we appreciate you. We wish we Thank could have had a big very old much. party. Thank you all very much. Beyond. So we'll have to have a big well, party after. Now I have a new story. Huh? <laughs> a, a new, new book. A new story to tell. Yes, you have a new My story goodness. to tell. My goodness. Wow. Yes. Thank you all very much. Thank you. We appreciate you. Crazy. And then we will actually announce our Protégé Award next month, hopefully. We know who it is. We just want to announce it. Um, we, well, we wanted to do them separately because we wanted tonight to be about you. And oh, so that's really sweet. You guys are amazing. Yeah. Wow. Oh, amazing. It is beautiful. You just can't even. Does anybody else have questions for Michelle? Ma'am? I said, does anybody else have questions for Michelle? Oh, yeah. Sorry, we got kind of sidetracked. And everybody's got their addresses and everything in the chat so that, and we've made arrangements for drop off and pickups. And um, did somebody write down Ann's address? I wrote it down if you didn't. Because she wanted a packet. Yeah, but I've got, um, I've got I'll her. put my email address in here. Yeah, put your email in. And then we'll go back and make sure we got everything. So if anybody needs to reach out to me for anything. Okay. Um, well, it's Sonia, I'll call you. I'll give you a couple of days to celebrate. So I'll call you next week. Okay. Yeah, well, Saturday is my birthday, and Friday my husband's leaving for eight weeks to go to Alaska. So yeah. I said I will be. We won't bother you until after that. Next week. <laughs> we'll let you have yeah. your week with your hubby. Yeah, I'll give you time to celebrate, and then I'll call you. Yeah. 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 Next week I'll be like, la 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 la. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll hit you. Thank you. Next week I, when you're on I your own. Thank you. I can't believe this. Wow. Well. Well, thank you all so much. I'm glad you enjoyed the presentation. I, I know it was a lot and just a little, you know, um, and actually it was only 15 slides and I was like, oh, so that's not even two minutes per slide. That's pretty good, but I feel like it went on forever. They were nice. No, slides. it was good. It was good. Okay. Stuff. okay. They were nicely designed. Yeah. Good. But it yeah. can be overwhelming. So if anybody needs any help, I'm here. Be happy to help. We appreciate that. Right, well, if everybody's hearts and minds are clear, we will adjourn. And um, thanks again, Donna, for hanging out with us tonight. Thanks for having me. And um, if you ever want to come back and hang out with us, we'd love to have you. Just let me know or let Sonia know or let post in the district. We'll get the, um, the information to you. And um, I guess we will adjourn. Good evening, ladies. Good evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good evening. Thank you, ladies. All righty. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Yeah.